The success of any flare work begins with prepping the tubing properly. This is 3 16 inch brake tubing, 28 thousandths of an inch wall thickness. The tube must be straight, and this tool is optimal for straightening. There are much more expensive and elaborate tools, but for coiled tubing this works just as well and is cost effective. This is the SUR&R tubing straightener and bending pliers. Tubing cut with a tubing cutter leaves a burred end that reduces the inside diameter of this 3 16 inch outside diameter tubing. Here, a mini tubing cutter from OTC cuts just the flared end off tubing. This also leaves a burred end that has to be reamed. This tubing reamer from inline tube has 45 degree cutting angles for both the outside and inside diameter of the tubing. This flaring tool uses a split pair of dies. The channel in the dies is smooth. This particular type of die setup is least damaging to the tubing. The first step in this flaring operation is to square off the tube with the end of the die and make sure the die halves are square with the fixture. The flat punch squares up the tubing with the end of the die and squares the die with the fixture. The bridge screw now can be tightened to secure the die halves to the fixture. Good and snug is plenty tight. Practice helps here and repeatable flares are possible once you master the flaring operation. For the 45 degree inverted flare, the first step is the punch that forms the bubble and the inside flare. The 45 degree cone that forms the outside flare is the same cone that's used for single flaring. This cone or punch will make the second lap of the double inverted 45 degree flare. This popular flaring tool is private labeled by at least a dozen vendors. It forms a nice 45 degree seat and a thicker shouldered lap. The rigid 345 tool with side clamp forms a slightly different seat and shoulder. This is a very good 45 degree inverted double flare with 45 degree angles on the back side and the seat. This is to preparation with some red rubber grease to make the flare punch work easier. This time the die halves are set for DIN, a metric bubble flare. Grease on the tubing side will help release the half dies. The tube is laid in the channel of the half die. The backside of a DIN metric bubble flare is a flat shoulder 90 degrees from the tube. These steps are outlined in detail in the part two video on flaring. Watch how quickly this flare can be made with a fixture mounted in a heavy bench vise. While this would be a difficult system to use beneath the chassis, some have done it. The time saved at the bench makes it practical to form brake lines or fuel lines at the bench top. This tool works well when building a brake system from scratch or replacing complete fuel lines. The off the chassis work is not a liability in that case as long as length measurements are taken carefully before forming each line. In the sequel series to brake tube flaring, we will form lines and show how to take measurements before creating flare ends. Always make sure the flare nut is in place before making a flare end. Using the DIN flare punch, this single step creates a DIN metric bubble flare. Note that the back shoulder is square and the front is a bubble. Always know what type of flare is being used on a system and whether the diameter of the pipe is metric or US measurement. If we were constructing an actual flare, the flare nut would have gone on first before forming the flare. Once cut and deburred, the flare tube can be measured to see if the wall thickness is uniform and correct. This 3 16 diameter tube is 28 thousandths wall thickness, which is normal for non-stainless steel type brake tubing. This is zinc coated 
OEM replacement steel brake tubing. The half dies are once again 45 degree inverted flare type. Tighten the bridge screw just enough to secure the die block and allow the tube to slide freely through the die halves. And square off the blocks and the tube end with the flat punch. Tighten the bridge handle. The first forming step is the bubble flare. This is a punch for the 3 16 inch diameter tubing. Lube the tube end with red rubber grease, which is harmless to rubber or brake parts. The use of this lubricant will help the tube end slide into the punch form better. Pull the handle with even force until the flare punch seats. This process is actually crushing the tube and the lubricant reduces the risk of the tube collapsing improperly. First step forms the back side of the flare and also the bubble. The back side of the inverted flare is 45 degrees. This is not a DIN metric bubble flare, but rather a girling brake type flare. Note that the DIN die block set has a square shoulder on the back side. This is not a 45 degree inverted flare. This is a flat or square back side with a bubble on the top, a metric ISO or DIN flare. The curvature and crown of this bubble is lower than the height of an SAE convex bubble flare. Note the punch designations on these flares. This is a well-formed ISO DIN metric flare. Later American models have moved toward the DIN or ISO metric flare. The metric bubble has appeared on Corvettes and other American models. The bubble flare at the right is an SAE convex or girling British type flare. The SAE convex flare is the first step in the formation of a 45 degree SAE double inverted flare. Nearly all US vehicles use a double inverted 45 degree flare. This flare was formed with a flare force pneumatic tool. The unique advantage of the flare force is its portability and repeatable 45 degree flares. Note that the flare force seat is narrower than the seat formed with the lever handle tool. Each of these seats is fully functional. The wider seat would have more contact surface with the fitting. The die block of the lever handled turret flare punch is easier on the backside tubing. These dies have smooth channels that do not mar the tubing behind the flare. Here is another example of the convex SAE flare formed with a lever handle tool. On this double flare, polished with Scotch-Brite, the zinc coating is still intact. Scotch-Brite can also be used to polish the flare seat. A smooth surface here is essential. There are diamond lapping tools for this operation. Race vehicles have polished flare seats. Jaw marks from the flare force tool can be polished out as well. An SUR and R hydraulic flaring tool formed this excellent backside flare. The 45 degree angle is a match for the flare nut. This DIN ISO metric bubble flare formed with a lever handle punch flare tool is nicely shaped, has no nicks, 
and looks professionally made. The same tool formed this SAE convex or girdling British style flare. This is not DIN or ISO metric flare. The backside is a 45 degree angle compared to the square backside of the DIN ISO flare. The SAE convex or 45 degree inverted double flare each have a 45 degree backside rake. This is a 45 degree inverted flare made by the SUR&R hydraulic flaring tool. Hydraulic and pneumatic flaring tools make flares that resemble the factory or manufactured flare. Compared to the lever handle manual tool, the shoulder of the flare is narrower. Either flare will work as long as the rake angle is 45 degrees to match the flare nut. Here, the flare nut angle and backside shoulder of the double inverted SAE flare are a match. This will provide a tight seal against the flare nut seat. Pressure between the cylinder or hose seat can exceed 1500 PSI. Normal operating pressures for a disc brake system are 12 to 1400 PSI. Flare laps and angles must be smooth with no nicks or damage. Jaw or die clamping that damages zinc coating can lead to rust formation and premature deterioration of the tube. Brake tubes get replaced when they look like this. In the Midwest Rust Belt, it would be a lot worse. Tubing would look more like this. Flare nuts take a pounding tube. Hex flats get rounded and chewed up in the process of removing the tube. Always use a flare nut wrench. By design, this is the best flare wrench on the market. The X-Force design from AGS Company. The usual open area is replaced by a drop-in section that gives the tube nut full coverage. Flipping the wrench over provides locking coverage in both directions. Regardless of your flare tool choice, the end result should be a well-formed flare that is safe and seals properly.